You speak? Give up? Oh, good boy, yeah, yeah. There's some new faces on campus in uniform. Who is that? And then it takes you a minute to figure out it's not a person at all, it's a scarecrow. The Cambria Scarecrow Festival celebrates its eighth year. Broadcasting live from Cal Poly in beautiful San Luis Obispo, this is Mustang News. Hello and thanks for joining us for Mustang News. I'm Kara Benson. And I'm Michael Frank. Here are this week's stories. Vice Mayor and City Councilman Dan Carpenter is leading efforts to repeal the rental inspection program. Dan Dempster has the story. Do you actually want to live in the garage? And I was like, yeah, like ton of space, ton of room, my own room, like sounded great to me. Ryan Cooper is living this year in a garage to give himself more space and make rent cheaper for him and his housemates. While Cooper is fine with it, this living arrangement would not fly under city regulations. They checked heater, they checked locks, they checked screens, vents. I mean, they, they checked all kinds of stuff. The rental housing inspection program was adopted in 2015 by city council in an attempt to protect renters from poor living conditions and single unit rentals. Mayor Jan Mark says the renting population such as students like Cooper, are vulnerable in the current housing market. The power dynamic is so skewed toward the landlords that it's really having negative consequences, I think, on the rental market as well as on the condition of the housing stock. The program conducts inspections on rental homes to make sure they are up to standard to health and safety codes. But City Councilman Dan Carpenter says the program is too much. Um, if your screen is torn on the outside of your house, you get written up for that. That's not a health and safety. If you have a piece of your paneling on your roof that is off, you get written up for that. That's not a health and safety. To me, it's an environment of overregulation. Enough is enough. Cooper and many other students feel targeted. I don't really know what they're looking for. I, I got the uh, intention that they were just trying to hassle college kids. Carpenter says students are the reason that many city ordinances and programs like this were adopted. I mean, let's, let's be honest, of course it's targeted to the students. I, I mean, I'd be disingenuous if I said it wasn't. We wouldn't have a noise ordinance if we didn't have students in town. We wouldn't have a trash can ordinance if we didn't have students in town. We wouldn't have an unruly gathering ordinance. Mm -hmm. Students are not being singled out. That would be illegal and ethically reprehensible as far as I'm concerned. Despite differences, both Marx and Carpenter say relations are improving between students and permanent residents. Daniel Dempster, Mustang News. Dan Carpenter's petition needs nearly 4,000 signatures for the repeal to appear on a ballot. The program is set to be resized by City Council in March. San Luis Obispo may be seeing a new party registration policy as early as spring 2017. The Community Civility Working Group has been working on the civility report to present to the San Luis Obispo City Council to limit citations throughout the community. Neighborhood Outreach Director Christine Wallace has been looking to other communities across the nation to model a party registration policy in order to promote a unified community. President, I would love to have the opportunity to register a social gathering so I can avoid a ticket. The police department's goal is to educate and inform community members of the noise ordinances and municipal codes so that residents can successfully host social gatherings. Slow PD encourages all residents to meet and communicate with their neighbors to limit noise citations. There are some new furry faces patrolling campus at Cal Poly. Allison Royal has the latest on UPD's K-9 units. Oh, oh, good boy, yeah, yeah. Meet the new face of UPD. Some furry faces recently joined the Cal Poly University Police Department. Five-year-old Cello and two-year-old Brizant. Cello's specialty is tracking, and he's found many missing children and elderly people over the past five years. He could track on asphalt, concrete, um, anything that's hard surface. A lot of dogs have a hard, pro a hard time with it unless they're fully trained on it. He's fully trained. But when Cello's not saving the day and fighting crime, he's begging for belly rubs. It's, it's pretty awesome. You sit there and talk to him in the car. <laughs> we get out, we'll do trainings around here, and it's kind of neat just having someone that looks at you all the time and, and listens to you. Officer Pippin tells Cello commands in German, like, Seats. And, Blutz. These two German shepherds are now a part of the Cal Poly community thanks to fundraisers, like a fun run last fall and t-shirt sales. 
But Officer Pippin says they're saving up money to eventually add another four-legged friend to the department, a bomb dog. Our vehicles are solely made for our dogs. So if you're walking around campus, you happen to hear our, do our cars are on, that's because our dogs are in the car and we want to keep them cool and safe. On and off the clock, these two are an officer and a gentleman. But knowing that this guy is here for you guys and for me and to keep us all safe, and this nose is amazing. And how many people that he's found, the drugs he's found, all of that is, it might be a lot of work, but it sure pays off in the end. It's a great thing. So knowing that I have him and he'll listen to me, I mean, I can't really explain it. Allison Royal, Mustang News. Coming up after the break, students think of new ways to interact with the media. And dozens rally to show concern for San Luis Obispo's water. Children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. As an American, it's hard to hear that we have a serious hunger issue in our country. And as a parent, it's even harder to hear that one in five of our kids struggles with hunger especially when billions of pounds of good food are wasted every year. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide billions of meals to families in need right in your community. Visit feedingamerica.org to support Feeding America and your local food bank. Together we can solve hunger. Together we're Feeding America. Every day across America, Excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Students came together this past Friday to think of ways to revamp the way users interact with the media with apps. I like that name. <laughs> In celebration of 100 years of student media, the Cal Poly Journalism Department hosted its first innovation challenge this past Friday. Students were divided into teams where they had 45 minutes to brainstorm different app ideas. The goal of the event was to come up with new ways to innovate and integrate journalism with technology. Maybe this is like a break from your parents' opinions. This is the first time you're really going to get away from like watching the news in your house and listening to your parents talk about what they think, you know? While brainstorming, each team had to create a two-minute pitch about their app that was to be given to the judges. Some of the teams focused on how their app would be beneficial to their audience, while others shared how their passions helped to fuel their creative process. Find yourself, know yourself. As soon as you can do that, you can let everybody know who you are, and it's going to be a lot harder for them to say no to you. The winning team was in town, an app that allows users to post and scroll through articles about landmarks and attractions in the town they are currently in or visiting. Allison Stoff, Mustang News. The winning team received a $100 Amazon gift card and an interview with the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Dozens gathered to express their concerns about oil drilling. San Luis Obispo residents and members of the Center for Biological Diversity came together for a rally in front of the Slow Superior Court. They are against a plan to drill new oil wells in the Price Canyon area. This is a major, major decision, and we know that the future of California's water and the future of the water for these people here are at stake. It's important. it's important to me because I feel that my water uh, and, and my environment, my land, my um, life is, in, is at stake. Protect our water. Protect our water. Water is life. 
Water is life. The center sued California regulators for supporting the removal of a slow aquifer from an act that protects it as drinking water. If it is removed, the natural resources company, Freeport McCormin, will be allowed to drill nearby. The rally took place last Thursday morning outside the courthouse. It happened just before a legal hearing regarding the lawsuit. Did you know there's a professor at Cal Poly who has three to four hundred students on his waiting list? Peter Gonzalez shows us why he's so popular. Is Aerospace 310, taught by Professor Bruce Wright, where 1,200 students a year learn about air and space. About a third of my students are petrified of flying. When turbulence comes along, it's about two-thirds. When they walk out of the class after that particular series of lectures, they say they can't wait to fly again, that flying is going to become fun because they know now it is very, very, very safe. But what you don't know is that Professor Wright also has the resume to back it up. He is the father of this. My students call me Daddy Raptor because it's the F-22 Raptor. Bruce is in one of his many retirements and has been teaching at Cal Poly for several years. I, I love it. I, uh, I really do. I, I thought I would hate teaching, and the reason I'm doing it is I absolutely love it. Bruce also happens to be a distant cousin of the fathers of aviation, the Wright brothers. Somewhere in this process, we're distant cousins because we had a, a common ancestor named John Wright back in 1485. There are several things that students will learn taking his course, but there's one thing in particular that he hopes all students walk away with. The most common terminology that's written on their evaluation is best class I've ever had at Cal Poly, bar none. I mean, you can't get much better than that. Peter Gonzalez, Mustang News. Students will have another chance at taking Arrow 310 in the winter. The CEO of Whole Foods, Walter Robb, came to Cal Poly to share his experience in the food and agricultural industry. Hunter Francis, the director of the Center for Sustainability, sat with Rob for a panel discussion at Chumash Auditorium. About 400 people filled the auditorium as Rob shared his experience as an entrepreneur of Whole Foods. I think it's valuable to students to really be able to get firsthand uh, a leader's experience in terms of how they've grown their business, um, how they've developed their leadership style, and what messages that they might have for young people who are just getting into their careers. The Center of Sustainability hosts several events like this panel discussion per quarter to give students an opportunity to listen to and meet successful leaders in agriculture. Francis said that topics such as soil health and organic agriculture are expected topics that will be covered in the future. We had some rain last weekend, but this week, will, this week will be hot and windy. I'll have more with this week's weather and five-day forecast coming up after the break. Kids will spend 15 minutes watching online videos like this one. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. When you're out there, there's no telling what you'll find. I see it, I see it! Oh, look at you. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. They're coming. Please, is everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. 
Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Hello, I am Nate Edelman and welcome to this week's weather forecast. Let's start off in the uh, North County where it is 89 in Paso Robles, 87 in Toscadero, 86 in Creston, and down in San Luis Obispo it is the hottest at 91. Moving on to the South County, it's still very, very hot, 94 in Arroyo Grande, 91 in Guadalupe, 90 in San Maria, um, 89 in Orcutt, and down in Vandenberg it is 86. Up in the beaches, even though it is October, it is still very uh, nice to go to the beach with 88 in Cayucos, 88 in Morro Bay, and then the hottest is 95 in Avila Beach, and then right below is 94 in Pismo Beach, and then down in Oceano is also 94. Up to the five-day forecast, it is 91 today with uh, some, some wind today. Friday it is 90. Saturday and Sunday it cools off of 79 and then 73, and then on Monday it's back down to 71. That is all for this week's weather forecast. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Nate. After the break, here's what's coming up in sports. Multiple Cal Poly sports have important matchups at home this weekend. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. This is why you took a second job. While you taught yourself how to fix the plumbing. While you'll do whatever it takes to keep your home. And that is why we want to help. We are making home affordable, a free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. Call 888-995-HOPE today. <clears throat> hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning? Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you get stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. OK, but remember, it's not what you say, it's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Heart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. OK, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. Okay, but remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Hello, I'm Dan Dempster with your Mustang News Weekend Sports Update. The Cal Poly football team is off to one of its best starts in recent years. Ayrton Osley has the latest on why the Mustangs are playing so well. Cal Poly football knows how to run the ball. It's the snap, hands it off, pro throw, big hole up the middle, down to the 15, down to the 10, into the end zone, touchdown Cal Poly. Since coach Tim Walsh took over in 2009, the Mustangs had never ranked lower than sixth in the country in rushing yards per game. For three years in a row, they've led the country in this statistic. The secret to this success is the option offense. With the option offense, quarterback Dano Graves lines up to hike the ball with multiple options on what to do with it. Graves is an athletic quarterback and can run with it or pass it if he chooses. He could also hand the ball off to any of the running backs lined up behind him. With the defense guessing on what could happen, the offense can take advantage and score at will. In the end zone and he's got the touchdown. Garcia got behind the Viking safety that time. 
this season. The Mustangs are 4-2 and and fresh off an offensive explosion last weekend against Portland State. Against the Vikings, the Mustangs put up 658 yards of offense and 55 points in a 20-point victory. With the offense firing on all cylinders and the defense playing well enough to maintain leads, the Mustangs go into the homecoming game this weekend against UC Davis, ranked 17th in the country. If they're able to keep this production up against conference foes Eastern Washington and Weber State later this season, the Mustangs could have a good chance for a shot at the FCS National Championship. Eric Nosley, Mustang News. Kickoff for the battle for the Golden Horseshoe game against UC Davis is 6.05 Saturday night. The Mustangs can move further up the FCS rankings and conference standings with a homecoming game win against the 2-5 and five Aggies. You can follow at CP Mustang Sports on Twitter for continuous updates during the game. The men's soccer team won loss against Sacramento State Wednesday afternoon to move to 3-4 and four, Nate this season. This Saturday, the Mustangs travel to Santa Barbara for another game in the Blue-Green rivalry. Kickoff is at 8 p.m. Saturday. A live stream of the game will be on BigWest.com. The Cal Poly volleyball team hosts a pair of games this weekend. The Mustangs are currently third in the Big West Conference and have won five in a row. Friday night, sixth place CSU Northridge comes to Mott Gym to play the Mustangs. The game starts at 7 p.m. Friday on Saturday. On Saturday night, the Mustangs also play Big West Conference leader Long Beach State at home. The game starts at 7 p.m. at Mott Gym as well. The women's soccer team plays two games this weekend. Cal Poly travels to UC Irvine to take on the Anteaters Friday night. Kickoff is at 7 p.m. After that, the Mustangs continue their road trip with a game against UC Riverside. The Highlanders are winless in conference and offer a chance for Cal Poly to improve from 8th in the Big West standings. Kickoff is Sunday at 1 p.m. That's all for sports. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Dan. Coming up after the break, this month, there are more than just people walking around the streets of Cambria. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. They said a bottle was just a bottle. That no one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. to follow some safety rules, now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. This Thursday through Sunday is Mustang Family Weekend here at Cal Poly. The weekend starts off at Farmer's Market in downtown Slo with parent and family booths. Friday is a full day of department tours and TEDx at the Performing Arts Center. On Saturday, there will be a homecoming barbecue and the football game against UC Davis. The weekend finishes off on Sunday with the parent and resident brunch kicks. Thousands of tourists go to Cambria each year for the Scarecrow Festival. In its eighth year, this is the biggest festival the city has ever seen. The Cambria Scarecrow Festival is a community-wide event that started in 2009. It gives the people of this little town the opportunity to be creative in a unique way. Cambria's Chamber of Commerce employee, Mary Ann Carson, says the first year was definitely a new experience for the town. 
The first year was pretty funny. We had 50 scarecrows, and mostly you were kind of shocked by, say, a scarecrow sitting on a bench. Who is that? And then it takes you a minute to figure out it's not a person at all, it's a scarecrow. Carson says that it's expanded because it's great for the entire community. That was good for our businesses, and the businesses then begin to build scarecrows and put them out in front of their businesses. So it's grown from 50 scarecrows the first year to now 540 this year. It has even revitalized Cambria tourism as a whole. Before this, October was dead in Cambria, and now we have thousands and thousands of visitors that come and see the scarecrows. And as with all Cambria residents, Carson has a favorite. I was really drawn to this ET. He's, he has been one of my favorite scarecrows. The festival will be running until the end of October. For information on the festival, visit cambriascarecrows.com. Looking to harness your inner Katniss Everdeen? Jillian Smith looked at a club. You can do just that. Fingers, no thumb or pinky. In only its second year as a recognized club on campus, Cal Poly's Archery Club has reached record sign-ups. The club was officially chartered in February 2015, and according to Miranda Bodwin, one of the club's founders, it has really taken off. So we did a um, club showcase and got over 250 sign-ups, uh, which, I mean, doesn't mean everyone's going to come out, but we had, I think, at least 35 to 40 people out here today. So pretty crazy. That's the biggest shoot we've had so far. Because this is a sport where injury can happen very easily, the archers take extreme precaution at the range, including verbal communication when it's not safe to be walking around. And wearing protective armwear. Bodwin is a certified teacher and says that anyone can learn how to shoot. I love teaching new people. I've taught literally three-year-olds to like like 80 year olds. Remember your foot positioning? <laughs> New archers can take as much time as they want learning the basics at practice targets. And once you hit a bullseye on this side, you get to move on to this range and work your way around the rest of the course. Each range gets increasingly more difficult with the targets moving farther and farther away. Some archers like to test their skills even more by shooting from a kneeling, crouching, or sitting position. Slosa Archery Range also includes a 3D animal course where the archers can practice hitting different types of targets. Jillian Smith, Mustang News. The Cal Poly Archery Club meets every other Sunday from 11 to 2 p.m. at Slosa Archery Range. Students can own and train a puppy for eight weeks through an organization called Doggy Do Good. Allison Martinez talks to a student who currently owns a puppy through this program. Why did I take on the responsibility of practically raising a child? Sure. Lindsay Mitchell has been taking care of four-month-old Maya for almost four weeks now. Yeah. Oh, I've, I've always loved dogs, I've always loved animals. I love staying busy and I love kind of always having someone around to play with, to mess with, to go on walks with. Mitchell got Maya through Doggy Do Good, an organization that finds purebred dogs and then tests their mannerisms to see if they are eligible to be trained as working service dogs. Good sit, Maya. Maya, down. Good down. After the puppy is picked, they are then given to raisers like Mitchell. So I'm not a certified trainer, but um, I do get to love her until she's six months old and get to expose her to just kind of general life and um, classroom settings and storefronts and things that she'll be exposed to when she's older. When Maya is about six months old, she will then go on to live with the trainer, where she will have formal round-the-clock training. And Maya is a very vocal German Shepherd, so she will most likely become a medical alert dog for someone who has a medical illness like diabetes, who needs insulin reminders, or someone who has seizures, and she'll be able to alert um, her caretaker Mitchell says she is happy she made the choice to be a raiser and encourages other college students to do so too. It's definitely worthwhile. It does. It is responsibility, sure, but at the end of the day, you are helping a dog grow up to help someone in, for the rest of their life. That's all we have time for.